Hello, and welcome to 15 Minutes in the Forest. I'm Karen Snape with Virginia Cooperative Extension, and today we're going to be learning about some of the common tools used to measure trees and forests. These tools are widely available, and most of them are fairly inexpensive. The first set of tools we're going to learn about are those that can be used to measure lengths and distances. So the first tool that most foresters learn to measure heights, lengths, and distances with is actually their own body. We always measure the diameter of trees at what is called breast height. Um, the father of American forestry was a man named Gifford Pinchot. He went to Europe, learned about forestry, and brought those concepts back to the Americas around the turn of the 20th century. He was quite a tall man, and he determined that the easiest place to measure a tree what he called breast height was at four and a half feet which is roughly here on me because i am not a tall man so most foresters learn very early on where four and a half feet is on their body this is pretty easy for you to measure at home with any kind of measuring tape that you might have it's not unusual for a forester to have um, a walking stick that is either four and a half feet tall or that has been marked at four and a half feet to make it easier to put that up against the tree and see that you're measuring in the right location. The next way that foresters learn to measure length and distances is by pacing. Pacing is just walking. So a pace is every two steps. So right, left, right, left, right, left. All of those lefts would be one, two, three. The most common distance that a forester learns to measure by pacing is called a chain. A chain is 66 feet. Now that sounds like a really random number, but it's been used in surveying for centuries. And 10 square chains is an acre. So if you had an area of land that was 66 feet long by 660 feet wide, that area of land would be one acre. So now I'm gonna show you how to count your paces and learn what your pace for a chain is. I'm going to use this measuring tape, which is called a logger's tape. And I'll show this to you later, but I'm just gonna use this plain, you know, measurement side to measure out 66 feet and then I'll pace that. Now, when we pace, we don't, um, you know, put our feet right next to each other, nor do we, you know, walk like a cartoon pirate, right? We just take normal steps. This is something that you might have to do for hundreds of feet, thousands of feet, all day. So you want it to be a normal, natural walking pace. And I'll show you that in just a minute. So most foresters, when they need to measure a length or distance that isn't four and a half feet or one chain, will use a logger's tape. So a logger's tape is a measuring tape. And you can see here at this side of the measuring tape is just, you know, inches and feet. Most forestry work these days is still done using the American measurement system, not metric. It's very normal for a logger's tape to have a nail or a screw on one end. If yours doesn't come with one, you can add one. And this enables you to stick it in the ground and walk away from it, or stick it into a, a tree, into the bark. Um, and this allows you to work alone without having to have somebody hold the other end of it because it is spring loaded. And you do want to be a little bit careful. Uh, it's metal. That's to keep it from getting stretched out but you don't wanna hold it while it zips back in because it will cut you. And you wanna be careful of, of the nail and that it doesn't go flying around when it comes back in and hits you in the back of the hand. So another thing that foresters often want to measure is the height of trees. And when talking about the height of trees, it's important to know whether you're talking about the total height of the tree to the very top of the tippy top branch, 
or whether you're talking about the merchantable height of the tree. So when harvesting trees, loggers and mills are looking for just the trunk of the tree, the part that you could cut boards out of, and only up to a certain diameter. So the first tool that we're gonna use to measure or at least estimate the height of a tree is just a stick. You can use any stick that you find on the ground. It helps if it's reasonably straight. And what you're gonna to do to use the stick method is you're just gonna put one end up against your eye and the other end at arm's length, grab it and turn it up. So you've now created a triangle from your eye to the bottom of the stick to the top of the stick. And then you line that up with the tree so that you create another triangle with the top and the bottom of the tree. And I'll show you how that looks in just a minute, but when you do that, because those two triangles are the same, just different in size, and because this distance is the same as this distance, it means that the distance you are from the tree is the same as the height of the tree. And we can measure distance pretty easily with our loggers tape or even by pacing. So to demonstrate what this looks like, we're going to measure the height of this flagpole because it's very easy to see where it starts and where it stops. Uh, there's no question about uh, the height of, of where it ends. All right, the ground here in the park is too soft for me to stick the nail in the ground. So we're just gonna hook it in here and go on back to the water bottle. Let me sit down when we measured. So we are estimating the height of the flagpole at about 33 feet. Now obviously 33 feet is just a very round estimate, but it gives you an idea. If you were thinking, is that tree 20 feet tall, 40 feet tall, um, it would give you an idea of how tall that tree is. It's better than nothing, it's free, and it's really easy to do. The next tool we're going to talk about is the Biltmore stick. The Biltmore stick was developed by Gifford Pinchot at the Biltmore Estate in North Carolina and it looks kind of like a yardstick, but it has um, special markings on it that can be used to measure both tree height and tree diameter. And the Biltmore stick measures trees in number of 16 foot logs. So every one of these measurements is 16, 32, etc. feet. To have a tree that's more than uh, even five logs long merchantable trunk of a tree is very unusual here in the eastern U.S. So you're not going to need to worry about it going beyond that. One of the things I really like about the Biltmore stick is that the instructions are printed right on it. So you know what you're going to do with this. You're going to stand 66 feet away from the tree. Remember that's a chain. We've practiced walking that far. So you're going to walk that far from the tree. You hold the stick plumb, so try to get it as straight up and down as you can. And you're supposed to hold it 25 inches away from your eyeball, right? Because Gifford Pinchot designed this thing to be used at arm's length and he was tall. And you wanna do it so that the bottom of the stick lines up with the bottom of the tree. And then you look and see where that tree, top of the tree is and usually you measure to the half log um, and usually people will round down so if it was like in here someplace you'd say two and a half logs if it was over here someplace you'd say it was two logs and that's how you measure the tree now this is not going to be accurate because there's no way that i can get the uh, biltmore stick um, 25 inches away from the camera but this is just so that you can see what we do so we hold it as plumb as we can we line up the bottom of the stick with the bottom of the tree and then we look 
at where the top of the stick intersects with the top of the, the top of the tree and the top of the stick. And you can see here, it's just a little bit above the one. So if this were a tree, and if we were um, doing this properly, we would say that this tree was one log tall. So the Biltmore stick is a great tool for measuring the merchantable height of trees in number of logs. Um, it's something that you can measure both the height and the diameter with the same tool. It's lightweight, it's efficient, it's easy to use. It's not typically used to measure the total height of a tree or to measure it more precisely than maybe about the half log or so. For a more precise uh, measurement for maybe um, scientific purposes, most foresters would use a clinometer. So Klein means slope, a clinometer measures slopes. And you can use this to measure the slope of the land, um, but it's also used to measure the height of trees because it's kind of the same thing math-wise. You know, slope is just how high up you go for how far away you go, right? Rise over run. And then rise over run will also tell you the height of an object when you already know the run, right? So that's what the clinometer is used for. Um, and then you look through this eyepiece here. You look through it and you look to the height of the tree. And with one eye, you're seeing the tree. With the other side, you see a scale that's inside of here. And so you can look at the, at the tree with one eye and where it hits the scale with the other eye is the height of the tree. Um, it takes some getting used to. I tell the kids like close one eye and then the other back and forth, back and forth. Um, and that, that can really help. Um, typically what you'll do is you'll measure where the high top of the tree is and then you'll measure where the bottom of the tree is and then you'll add or subtract those numbers to, to get it right depending on if you are uphill or downhill from the start of the tree. Uh, often there are two, um, two different scales inside when you're looking at the um, numbers. Often one of those scales will be the 66 foot scale. All right, so when you're 66 feet away from the tree and you know that that's your run, your run is 66 feet, it'll tell you your rise, your height of the tree. Um, the other one will usually be percent, and that you would use if you were 100 feet from the tree. You can also like do the math. If you can only get 50 feet away from the tree, you can use the percent side and do the math to figure it up what it is for 50 feet. So that's what you're measuring. You're lining that line up with the height of the tree. And that tells you the, the height of the tree. You can see the zero there. So if you were looking up more, you would see that line crossing. And that would be the height of your tree. Well, that's all I have time for this week. But I'll be back in a few weeks to talk about some other ways to measure trees and forests and simple tools that you can use to do so. In the meanwhile, please watch the rest of the team's 15-minute videos as they come up and have a great week.